have an agreement when it comes out. I said, I won't talk about chocolate if you don't talk about goat's milk. <laughs> Anyway, we all, you know, in this world, that's the fun of raw living foods. That's the fun of our lifestyle, the culture life. We can like, give each other a little room. Give each other a little room to breathe. And that's how we are, because we want to be accepting. See, without love, none of this means anything anyway, does it? We can eat this food all day long. If we don't have love, we don't vibrate. You don't vibrate, it just goes away. You've got to have love to go with it. Okay? Amen. Number one, love chocolate. Cho love chocolate. Love chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> love that. Number one. Yes. Does um, um, ca caffeine coffee at all has any antioxidant properties? Yeah, there are some antioxidant properties. In fact, there's some studies that shows caffeine and coffee do that. And then when I do that, I, I balance it out with my adrenals. I don't like my adrenals to be messed up. But now my girlfriend has a cup of coffee every day. That's her life. She says it helps you go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I say, I'll just do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you, know? you know, we should not be called the wheatgrass place. We should be called the enema <laughs> place. <laughs> we have a lot of enemas that create enough. Did you guys know that? Mm -hmm. We do about six a day. Oh, on the good, uh, when Frico first come in, because we can even know this. Ann taught us one thing, too. All disease starts where? Oh, yeah. Yeah. In the colon. Well, actually, it starts at the dinner table. I'm in my oh, yeah. math class. I'm, I'm, I, I graduate September 10th. And I will be a naturopath, I guess. I don't know what that means, but I'll be finished up. But in my class, uh, I'm the only raw living foodist in the class. Of all the naturopaths, I'm the only guy that's eating raw. Okay? I think I'm joking. I'm, and I made fun of the class. How do you make a living unless you sell some supplements? And so her uh, come on, come on, come on. Well, I say I'll use those things at certain times, but then I want to use what? Raw living foods, because they have what? They have oxygen. oxygen. And enzymes. They have everything I need in them, and that starts the healing process. The rest of that stuff's too slow for me. I need to go fast, unless somebody's what? Very weak. Yeah. If they're very weak, then I've got to what? Supplement them up, don't we? Mm -hmm. we got to do that. We'll, ooh, I'll, I'll get them up. And the minute I've got them, so they're moving around. i got a gal there this week that has stage 4 cancer. It's in her liver. It's in the mouth of my in her bones. It's spread. It started out with breast cancer. It's everywhere. When they came, she came in, they carried her in, and uh, the last three or four days she's been walking. Wow. And guess what? I didn't give her one supplement. Not one supplement. She'd been on every shed of boxes of supplements. When she came in there, she was spending $2,000 a month on supplements, and she was dying. I fed her the raw living foods and go see her. Walk. Go out and see her today. Her name's Danielle. She's now on the first floor. You met Danielle. I think you're sorry. She's walking around like this now. Mm. Okay. We gave her some. We gave her some enemas. We gave her some colonics. We put oxygen in her bowels with colonics and got her cleared out. We started feeding her wheatgrass. Oh my gosh, wheatgrass, 70 percent plus chlorophyll. That's why. The wheatgrass ladies here. Yeah. Seventy percent plus chlorophyll. Well, chlorophyll, we know this. It's only one molecule different than what? Blood. Than your blood. See, the single molecule in your blood is what? Iron. And what's the one there? Magnesium. That gets it the green. And when you take that in, it almost fakes you out. In fact, it immediately raises your red blood cell count. What do red blood cells carry? Oxygen. Oxygen. Oh my gosh. We don't have to be rocket scientists, do we? We don't have to be natural paths to know that. In fact, I found out why I wasted a lot about three years here. And that's, all I need to do is eat the food and show you how to eat the food. Show you how to eat the food and everything changes. That's why I'm so blessed to see this. I'm so blessed to walk in here. And I'm, I, I, I don't know why you made me wait so long. I get up here and see you guys because it's like when I see it, I'm going, this is the answer. It's all on that table. Eat that two thirds of the time, three quarters of the time, and you will see disease flu. It cannot live in an oxygenated environment. So the culture of life, we eat food that's live. We eat mostly live foods, okay? Um, and all these starts to hold. Again, when I think I told you in that class, the one guy gave me one good thing. He says, you know what, Bobby? It really doesn't start to cold. It starts where? At the table. Mm -hmm. At the table. Mm -hmm. At the table. At the table. And we are in this situation. The reason we do so many colonics and we do so many enemas is because of what's called the standard American diet. See, that's called SAD. Standard American diet. SAD. And the reason it's SAD is because what's it done to us? It's deprived us of the, of the water we need. It's deprived us of the oxygen we need and continues to do so. Go ahead. 
Um, I have a question about megahertz. If, I don't know if that's. That's not megahertz. Hertz. Megahertz. It's it's six six point oh sixty. Megahertz uh -huh. is seventy two. So we, we, well, how we do you measure that? that? Because how did you know you were forty? We have a meter. Oh. Uh, we have a meter. Uh, you put a meter right on, on your, your finger. Oh, okay. And we can measure. Oh, Absolutely. Okay. Wow. So we do that over there too. Come on over and we'll measure. Okay. We'll <laughs> measure and see where you're vibrating at. Wow. Real simple stuff. Now there's some great things out there. We got some great. There's other things that your your chiropractors have, your naturopaths have, and all these new software and stuff. That's good stuff. Don't. I'm not saying that's not good for what. Figuring out where you're at. You know, we sauna every day. By the way, you know, anybody who has infrared saunas, I need six of them and I need them like for free. <laughs> Actually, I got. As I said, I got one. Was just donated. I got to go all the way to Virginia. I have a truck. We got to pick up. Remember we're a 501c3. We never turn anybody down. But we have we have people who help us. They try to help finance what we do. They send us money. One of them just give us ten thousand dollars for scholarships for people. If someone can't make it, we make everybody pay half. So everybody can afford to sell a TV, can't they? To get well, go sell your TV. That's about half <laughs> for a week there. But uh, uh, we we do saunas there. We do wheatgrass baths every other night. We let you soak in wheatgrass. Why would we let you soak in wheatgrass? Say the word. Oxygen. Oxygen. In fact, we know there's three to twelve percent increase from a wheatgrass bath in your red blood cell count. Rolls it up. That's why we see disease flee. We don't heal anything, do we? We just feed people. We feed them, and we what? Love them. Love them. Love them. Create a safe harbor. Make your life a safe harbor for yourself first, and then for everybody else coming. Make your life a safe harbor for yourself first, then everybody else, and watch it change. The disease cannot stay in the presence of oxygen, especially, especially when there's love wrapped around it. So, culture life, first thing we really should put at the top of culture life is what? Love. Mm -hmm. Love. You want to vibrate high? Think about when you feel like love. It changes everything, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And love has no judgment. Love has no any boundary. Mm -hmm. And love enables us to take this food and even energize it more. And bring it on. In fact, when we're making food in our kitchen, now we use gloves because we have guests, but if I'm at home, I have my hands off, my friends are coming over, I'm going to make sure they're going to feel all my vibration in that food. I'm going to feel everything. Don't be afraid to make your raw living foods with that, the culture of life. Love is in the center of everything. Put a big head right in the center of that heart. Oxygen, we'll put right here. Oxygen, where do we get it? Let's, let's list some places we get oxygen. Raw food, raw living foods. And a raw living food is what? A sprout. It's got to be sprouted. It's alive. Okay, it's alive. And when that happens, see, we live in a what? A single atmosphere here. We have one atmosphere. If I have a falcon sprout, a mung bean sprout, a red clover sprout, any kind of broccoli sprout, whatever you're sprouting, it comes out at 600 atmospheres. Every sprout. That's why if I look out there and I can see them coming up through the cement out there. Yeah. They will break through everything. Yeah. You are taking the highest vibrational food in the world and you're taking the sprout. Sprout something today. If you don't know how, I'll go, on the, I'll go on the website. I'm not trying to sell my website. That's what you go on it. We don't sell anything, by the way. And it's all free. This information is free. You don't have to join or anything. Go on and look at our sprouting chart. Get on there and sprout some things today. Go sprout some food. Real food. Living food. And it's so easy. There's no reason for hunger and starvation today. So when I, I lived in Africa for several years, and when I was in Africa, I fed about 2,000 children a day. I had, a, I had six medical clinics over there I was running. And I came back from Africa, and I was, oh man, I could never get a what? Enough food for the people. We used to feed them ugali, which is maple corn, maize, and we'd feed them uh, beans, uh, sukumawiki greens. And I used to have these giant pots made down in Nairobi. They were like huge pots and big, big open fires and with charcoal and cook this stuff. But I never had enough. Never got enough energy to many children. Some died in my arms. They're pretty passionate about that. I saw it. But if I came back and I thought, man, what am I going to do? And I could never quite figure out what to do. And I was laying with cancer. In my hospital bed, they'd given up on me. I was in hospice at home. Okay? And I had a dream. I gotta share this dream with you. Because it has to do with living food. I don't know if I was in the body or out of the body when I had the dream. But it was a dream. But I dreamed and I came up above the earth. And as I looked down upon the earth, 
It was a blue planet. Outer space out there is black, and the stars are shining over the Earth. And then it started magnifying. Boom, 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 coming closer, closer, closer. And then I looked down on the continents, and I could see shiny glass houses, green houses, stretched for tens of thousands of miles across every continent, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. They were line after line in Europe and in Africa and in the, far, in the Middle East and the Far East and the U.S. There were green houses everywhere. And then it magnified up a little closer to me. And I actually looked in and you know what I saw? I saw people in wheelchairs and people pushing them. And they were going into the greenhouses. They were going into the greenhouses. And it magnified up again and I was inside the greenhouse and I was looking at them. I was up in the top of the greenhouse looking down on them. It makes me want to cry inside when I see it. And they weren't picking the food. You know what they were doing? They were pulling it over and they weren't they're were eating tomatoes right on the vine. They were picking apples, not picking, but picking apples right there. Why? Because it was so close to the source of life and sun. So close. I want you to get as close as you can get every day. The closer you get, the reason we sprout, you come to Creative Health Institute, we have a whole room of nothing, this, this whole wall is nothing but sprouts, jars of sprouts running up and down. All through the place, because we put it six cups a day in people's food. Six cups a day, the average person gets a living sprouts, whether it be alfalfa, mung bean, red clover, broccoli sprouts, you name it, fenugreek. They got a liver problem, boom, they get the fenugreek, don't get Hiawatha. We're going to make sure they get what they need so that they can what? Live. And see, you don't have to wait to get cancer like me. See, I was a hard nut. I was a hard nut. You know, I used to work out, pump iron, do all the stuff, football, the whole thing, and I thought it was a hard nut, and I didn't get it. I supplemented myself with that. I had the best supplements in the world. Any supplement I want, I took them all. I got cancer. Because I wasn't getting what? Oxygen. I wasn't getting oxygen. I was falling apart. I had to get oxygen in my body. Couldn't just get it right down the street. I had to get it at a cellular level. And see, that's what we're missing. Get that in the culture of life and get the oxygen in us and things change. We get the enzymes in us and things change magnificently because the enzymes tell vitamin A where to go, vitamin B, vitamin C, this mineral zinc, get here. Whatever it says, everybody tells what goes on. Without those, you're just kind of lost. Did you know when you eat cooked food, you get a response. The response you get is a rise in your white blood cell count every time. You all know that? I've got to give you the science. Every time you get a what? What does that show us? That's right. We are now seeing we're allergic. We're naturally allergic. That tells you something. What were we really created to eat mostly? Probably raw foods. Kind of say high alkaline. We've got to be alkaline, right? If we're not alkaline, we're not, we don't have oxygen. In our center, we have an alkalized water. Alkalized machine. We always run that thing at 8.5, and it's certain when I got somebody really sick, I roll up to 9.5. I give them special water to make sure they're getting it. So I get them a lot. Bring your alkaline. Every person who comes in ill in our, our center is out of oxygen. They're out, their alkalinity is unbalanced. Their pH is unbalanced. They're down in what I call the acidic side. And the minute we bring them up, 6.8, 7.0. 7.2. Woohoo! I watched the change take place. They start changing. I don't care how sick they are. Now, we can't always stop cancer. You can't always stop the uh, major, you know, from someone from dying. That doesn't always happen. Because only God knows those days. Every man knows those days are the, the days for them. But I'll tell you what, when I see them walking, and they're up, and they couldn't walk when they came in, I see them with hope, and they have health higher than they had possibly before they got the cancer. That's amazing. Now we see lots of people every year. We have people come and talk uh, whether, whether they've had cancer and they change their lives and they heal their bodies. We don't heal anything at Creative Health Institute. We just give them food and creates oxygen. So culture of life, that's oxygen. Make that happen in your lives. Eat all the raw living foods you can. Okay? I want to take a minute any questions? I mean, I'm going to Q&A. I'd like to wait for high water and I'm doing Q&A. All right, a minute. Ladies, and hold your questions for a second. Because what I'd like to do is I'd like to take a minute. I have a couple of people here whose lives have changed dramatically. One standing right next to me, my assistant, Patty. 
And uh, I want you to just kind of, have you just kind of tell your story for a minute. And then I'd like Linda to give you a little about diabetes, okay, and how this changed your story. See, we do diabetes turnaround. We've had 100% turnaround in type 2 diabetes, not 80 or 90. 100% life change. Okay, diabetes is nothing but a lack of oxygen. It's what big time. And love. And love. Thank you. And love. Well, see, oxygen and love are one thing to me anymore. They're just all together. But I'm with you. All right? So let's take a minute. Patty? Sure. Close yours. Um, so my name is Patty Maher, and I'm grateful to talk to you all. I have been really in health institute since October 16th of 2010, so I'm coming up on a year, and my life has transformed um, just immeasurably. Um, I have healed, the main things that I have healed are my multiple sclerosis and my um, compulsive eating disorder. And um, yeah, I don't know for sure, like everybody says, like, so does this mean that your MS is in remission or like what? And I don't have any health insurance right now. And I see that as kind of a blessing because what the doctors were doing for me was making me sicker and sicker. All I know is I feel really good. <laughs> so, um, I, and it's like five thousand dollars to get an MRI, which is kind of the test that measures your, you know, your lesions on your brain. So I haven't had any symptoms. Um, the only symptom that I have remaining is a slight deficit on my right side, as if I. Have Is that 
you have these strange neurological symptoms like anxiety attacks, uh, urinary incontinence, things like this that will come on and then they'll like, go away and then you go to the doctor and they'll be like, no. So anyway, um, then once I lost the job and I'm sitting there smoking all summer long, I had a major attack and um, I had no health insurance at this time. And I was, this side of my body was so paralyzed for about three weeks that if I was going up a step, I would have to lift my leg up. I couldn't ride my bicycle. I couldn't, I, mean, I wouldn't have been able to, to paddle. Um, I was dragging, I'd go to see my friends and I, I was dragging my foot literally like this. Like, you know, like, um, it was really, really bad. Most of the symptoms vanished after about three weeks. But then what happened is I still had this little bit of a deficit, which I still have today. And I had no health insurance, and I, the medical people, I felt like they really weren't helping me because they were kind of discouraging me from getting a diagnosis um, because they said, well, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to get a job if you get diagnosed. Just weird things. I was, I was terrified already from losing my job and having my career ended, our whole newspaper folded. And I just, it was just, I didn't know what to do, single person, not handling it well, having a lot of anxiety and stuff. And um, I ended up getting a job as a church secretary, and I got some health insurance and stuff like that. And then I ended up getting diagnosed. And the event happened in 2005. And then in 2007, I, um, I basically got diagnosed. And the reason why I got diagnosed, I didn't think that I had an accident or anything like that. What I really thought was that 